Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, all set. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Inisa from the UNDP team and will be your moderator for today. Um, there's translation available. So uh, if you would like to use one of the local languages, be it Albanian or Serbian, you can use the little world button at the bottom of this uh, Zoom screen so that you have access to uh, translation. Um, Earth Day is April 22. Uh, our team sat down and thought if only everyone acted towards the environment with the consciousness and with the attitude that we do on Earth Day, we would probably have a redesigned economy and a social system. So with this in mind, we started a, a, a platform, which is Kosovo Earth Days, with the purpose of bringing together uh, the community and bringing together uh, environmentalists, the wider community and represent private sector and also representatives from institutions so that we really push this uh, environmental mission and uh, green sort of development for Kosovo. So uh, in, in our mission uh, and in our uh, work for the Kosovo Earth Week or Earth Days, uh, we have partnered up with uh, UN Habitat and ICK, and we're really trying to introduce innovative approaches to, to the work that we're doing uh, so that we're not only using linear communication, but also being present there. Yesterday, we had the first day of uh, a Kosovo Earth Days, and we uh, put up uh, an urban garden at the very heart of Pristina, um, calling for urban greening. So basically, uh, the, the urban greening, but also circular economy, um, including sustainable fashion, energy efficiency, solar energy, community engagement, are all topics that we are covering during uh, Earth Days. Um, what is sustainable fashion for us? And, and for, for a lot of people, uh, for the most part, looks like fashion looks like such a clean and, and glamorous area. So why is it a problem at all? Are there solutions to, the, to this problem? So uh, to cover this discussion, it is a thrill for me to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, an opening word from Maria Suoko, resident representative for UNDP Kosovo, Uranik Bego, executive director at uh, Innovation Center Kosovo, and four brilliant designers, researchers, and entrepreneurs trailblazing an alternative path for fashion right here from Pristina. Uh, Krenoa Rogova, Hanna Zecha, Niki Murseli, and Vesa Saliu. Without further ado, I will pass uh, the floor to UNDP Kosovo resident representative, Ms. Suoko. Thank you so much, Enisa. And good morning, everyone. It's, it's really a great honor and, and to be hosting this event during the Kosovo Earth Days. I think this is gonna be a fascinating discussion. As I said, we're organizing the Earth Days uh, together with UN Habitat under the umbrella of the UN Kosovo team together with our partners. And we're really happy to have ICK as our partners here. Um, I said, we're using the Kosovo Earth Days really um, as an occasion to raise public awareness on the urgency of the need to promote environmental sustainability. And, and also very much believing that every individual can play a role, an important role in protecting the planet. And we, you know, through the Earth Days, we wanna provide some ideas and inspiration for people to do so. Um, and these topics, they vary from urban greening to energy efficiency, to renewable, renewable energy, uh, circular economy, and now today, this morning, uh, slow fashion or res responsible fashion. And it's, it's a topic that I'm personally uh, really, um, really excited about myself. Um, so that's why it's really a pleasure to have you all with us this morning. We know that fashion is a trillion dollar industry employing more than 300 million people along the value chain. Uh, there's been a lot of triumphs, but also a lot of failures in the global system. Uh, while access to cheap and trendy fashion items has become a norm everywhere, including also here in Kosovo, the cost of the production is far too high. 
if we take into account all the pressures that it, it puts on the planet and on the people along the value chain. Particularly with the COVID pandemic, we've seen that it's, it's hit the fashion industry hard, just like many other industries, but we've seen that the shops have been closed, orders have been put on hold, factories have been stopped, uh, brands have stopped payments to their suppliers, garments are no longer working, um, or garment workers are lo no longer receiving salaries. There's been a lot of um, a very, very serious impacts on, on the people who are along the value chain. The pandemic has really revealed the inequalities in the system and the system that fits the fashion industry. And I think it's been a real eye opener to many of us. There are about 80 to 100 billion clothing products being produced every year. Every week, there are new fashion collections. There are sales more and more frequently and more and more products that people buy only to use them once. And so what are some of the impacts of the industry? We've seen that it's uh, many of the jobs in the fashion industry, they're not really providing the, the safety and protection to the employees that they should. We've seen there's a lot of sweatshops. Um, the fashion industry is causing a lot of pollution of soils through pesticides, uh, through pollute, polluting waters, through dyes um, that are being used for fabrics. It's disturbing life in the ecosystems. We're also seeing that the greenhouse gas emissions produced by the fashion industry are more than those combined from the international marine and aviation industries combined. And this is even before the COVID pandemic. Uh, the cost of transport of fashion items from developing countries to the customers, which is um, normally the route. And at the same time, we're seeing that truckloads of clothes are being burned or dumped into landfills every second. There's a, the list goes on, but you know, we're dealing with a big waste problem uh, that is really not being solved as we speak. And, and just to summarize, it is the second most polluting industry in the world, just after the oil industry. But what is it that we can do about it? Is, can this be changed? And what role could Kosovo play in it? Um, we believe that technology, innovation, and sustainable solutions can alter the path of fashion. And Kosovo designers and entrepreneurs that we have here with us today are leading a different path with a great potential. And I'm really happy and very much looking forward to hearing from them, these inspiring road models, um, and then from the discussion with everyone participating. And last but not least, a lot of this change towards greener fashion industry comes from customers that demand a change. Each, of us, each one of us needs to act differently around fashion. Do we really need as much as we buy? Can we buy less, but more durable materials? Can our clothing be reused? Um, what is it that we can do? And, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to be wearing a dress that is actually made out of old bed sheets. It, there's a Finnish design company that uses uh, old rental textiles for new clothing items. Um, just one example, but I think there's a lot we can all do through our own choices. But first, I would really, I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Woko, for, for bringing up all of these uh, key important facts about the damages that the fashion industry has has been causing and um, the, the potential for altering this path. Um, 
Uh, it is a pleasure to introduce next, uh, as an opening speaker, the Executive Director of the Innovation Center Kosovo, the home of innovation in Kosovo, and also uh, the home of some of uh, the uh, startups and firms who are with us here today. So, Mr. Bego, over to you. Thank you so much, Anissa. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. Uh, Ms. Soko, thank you so much for your opening and, and a very enlightening uh, also words, but statistics uh, above all, which I think are at the core of this event in raising awareness about sustainability in all aspects of life. And uh, um, Kosovo as an emerging economy uh, should do better, obviously, when it comes to, to this subject and uh, definitely uh, sustainable development should be core of any strategy from which we start our growth and our and our prosperity uh, but i just wanted to, to share with you maybe a, a definition of uh, sustainable development which i found very helpful maybe in sharing with others and which also uh, becomes somehow a mission so sustainable development is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. And I think this should say enough for all of us, at least uh, as parents, as, as community uh, builders, that uh, we have to settle sometimes uh, for less and having in mind um, definitely the future uh, of our children and our, 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 our communities in general. Uh, Having this in mind that Innovation Center Kosovo, definitely technology uh, describes us probably the best, but that technology should be used in such a manner that after all, it improves lives of our citizens and creates a well-being. So it is a tool uh, not for creating profits necessarily, but also creating a well-being and, and solving our pressing solution uh, and sol uh, solving some of the problems for our pressing solutions. So. In this regard, uh, Kosovo has many issues, and um, we, we're trying to use technology and facilitate those startups that, to create sustainable businesses that would definitely uh, solve some of these problems. And when it comes to, uh, to sustainable development, I think technology can play an important role. That's why we're happy to partner with uh, UNDP, uh, with UN agencies, uh, because we're, we're working close local with other agencies, but also with other donors who are very active in, in raising awareness and also really um, helping aspiring entrepreneurs moving into action and becoming the new role models of our uh, new economy. So with that being said, I'm very happy to be here uh, uh, with all of you. I'm happy to see here Kenare, Hana, Aniki, Vesa, uh, definitely leaders uh, and the new role models, which will definitely inspire new emerging entrepreneurs uh, with new ways of thinking, but also apl applicable technologies. And uh, always having in mind that, uh, yes, we have only one earth and we have to take care of it. Uh, with that being said, I want to wish you all a very successful Kosovo Earth Days uh, events. And uh, we stay committed to helping and participating in all events, but uh, above all, uh, we stay committed in really uh, making uh, and building together with all relevant partners a better future in Kosovo, always, but always, always having in mind sustainable development. So thank you all. Uh, Mr. Bego, thank you so much for, for uh, the insightful take on sustainable development and its meaning for Kosovo and just for being a great partner for our Earth Days uh, throughout the week. Um, our, our agenda has next Ms. Krenoa Ergova, who uh, although is here to talk about in innovation and a future that is different for Kosovo, is currently facing an electricity cutout. And um, we maybe until uh, our IT colleague supports cannot to join through uh, her phone to rejoin. Maybe we move over to the next speaker uh, who's Vesa Saliu until uh, we have Krenoa back. But again, uh, Vesa has uh, a video which she wants to share with us before uh, going ahead with their presentation. So I'm hoping that Amir can uh, in the meanwhile also share uh, Vesa's video for us. If multitasking works, this should be the case. 
and it does. Okay, this is perfect. We surely knew about... Who do you think are the greatest polluters in the world? We knew about plastic. We surely knew about food. Hello, fashion. 12% of landfills is overflowing with textile. We got you. Our project's mission is to reinvent consumption and empower local communities. Everyone has an opportunity to rely on our platform to sell pre-owned clothing, to economically empower themselves in this era of overconsumption. Common Store will be an e-commerce platform that offers the exchange of vintage and secondhand clothes, from selling to buying. When we initially started to develop the idea, there were only 50 home boutiques on Instagram. Because of these unprecedented times that we are living, this number flourished to 700 and is growing every second. Common Store platform will be an indirect employer where everyone will work for themselves and make executive decisions for their own boutique. The main target market are millennials and Gen Z. Also considered as trendsetters globally, they compromise a group of new age buyers that are focused on products and services that continually offer innovative solutions. This group in Kosovo is considered to be high in influencing tastes and setting trends in our society. With our combined knowledge and experience, we are now trying to design new behaviors instead of new products. We strongly believe that this model we are introducing in Kosovo will be a bridge to something bigger. As we know, the new generation, we are taking the lead and a whole new mentality is taking place in our region. We are working really hard to be part of that change. Common Store. That's a powerful video. Okay, so Vesa Salio is the co-founder of the Common Store, a peer-to-peer -peer retail platform for secondhand clothing. Um, the Common Store, if I may say, is still super fresh in the scene and uh, coming from the ICK incubator. And uh, Vesa is also a product designer and we're really keen to have her uh, share with us uh, and present her, her uh, platform. Uh, Vesa, are you able to share the screen? That's perfect. Okay, over to you, Vesa. And I see Krenoir is back, uh, meanwhile asking for Vesa to unmute herself. Perfect. Hi, can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Sarhati. Thank you, Ms. Suoko. And thank you, uh, Mr. Bego and all the participants. So uh, Common Store was founded in 2020 during the quarantine days back in uh, March in Pristina. Shandy, a friend and I saw the need uh, to get together and uh, get people together to create a more sustainable chain of uh, retail by creating a platform where we can sell, buy, get inspired and promote products and creations. We, uh, as a common store are powered by a group of young visionaries containing designers, creators, free thinkers, driven by the passion to contribute to the community. Uh, can you see my presentation? No? No, not yet. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Let me just... The perks of uh, online talks and conferences. Can you okay. see it now? Yeah, we can. Sorry. Uh, so com uh, common, store, uh, common Store will be an inclusive experience for anyone who has the drive to create and to improve their surroundings. A safe haven for young people, marginal, marginal uh, marginalized groups, influencers, inspiring creators, and up-and-coming designers, uh, all this by offering them a space and visibility uh, to express themselves 
uh, in the most organic way, all this without leaving their homes. When I was growing up, it was not that cool to wear secondhand or vintage clothes. Fortunately, it has started to become more popular throughout the years, but before becoming trendy, walking into uh, thrift stores was highly stigmatized and was seen to be for people who couldn't afford new clothes. It is still a slow pro uh, process, and for us, this is the main and the most difficult, actually, uh, objective to reach, to raise awareness and break the stigma of real clothes by changing buyers' attitudes and behaviors. However, uh, from our uh, research with the broad participation of young individuals from universities of Kosovo, uh, we found out that 63% uh, uh, buy secondhand and 92% would sell their uh, reused clothes on a legit legitimate market uh, like ours. Uh, we believe that a a COVID pandemic had and, had and will have a lasting impact on consumer habits uh, all over the world, also in Kosovo, specific, specifically how consumers view their relationship with clothing. Uh, we are seeing a rapid acceptance of uh, resale. But when we talk about uh, global numbers and the uh, impact uh, the fashion addict addiction has on the planet. Uh, we are sharing, I'm sharing some not so fun facts. So as we can see around 85% of textiles are thrown away. That's equal to about 13 million tones uh, that are either uh, thrown into landfills or burned. Uh, I mean, I imagine if all of these clothes would, would be reselled or would give uh, would give away in a charity. So 92 million of tons of textiles waste is created each year, and it is equal to a waste uh, truck full of clothes ends up on landfill sites every second. So by 2030, uh, it is expected to dispose uh, of more than 134 million tons of textiles a year. So as uh, Ms. Swoko mentioned, fashion sucks up more energy than both aviation and shipping combined. And we think that's shocking. But uh, how we, uh, can we contribute as individuals to lower all of this dump? Uh, the answer is simple. Uh, so yeah, by building a conscious closet, taking a step back before purchasing and asking yourself some questions like, do I need this? Do I need this? What is the real cost of this purchase? Like what it went through? How frequently will I wear this? Do I have something similar uh, already or do I know someone that I can borrow something similar from? And how much am I uh, spending when the opposite, I could reinvent everything that's in, on my closet. And uh, if I don't want that, piece of clothing, how about someone else would make a good use out of it. And also I would have some extra money in my pocket if I could just resell that garment. Uh, realizing this and being more conscious and rational, uh, rational about our buying behaviors will immediately extend the life of already created garment. Uh, extending the lifespan of all of your clothes by uh, an extra nine months reduces its carbon, water, and waste footprint uh, by around 30%. Each and also cuts the cost in resources, supply, and launder by 20%. Increasing the process uh, of our clothes is considered one of the most effective ways to reduce the overall impact of, impact of the clothing uh, industry, and it is widely known that uh, also luxury brands, unfortunately, uh, destroy their undersold rather than selling them with a discount prices or donate them to charity organizations. So Common Store will help its community to start to put into practice a more responsible buying and introducing the new way of digital selling that will use uh, that will be useful to um, mostly informal businesses that already operate from their Instagram accounts. 
uh, but they are not registered and are more or less considered illegal, providing uh, to them a digital legitimate market and safe earning. Yeah, and the most hard, the hardest question is, are we breaking up with fast fashion? Uh, I know it's hard, uh, and I know we're all hooked up in that feeling of buying new clothes. I'm still working on it. Uh, I used to buy 10 pair of jeans uh, just for the sake of having more diversity in my wardrobe, even though I ended up wearing uh, only two or three of them. So the smallest inconvenience would happen and I would find myself uh, uh, looking for salvation in uh, shopping malls. I know it's a slow process, but at least we also know that uh, we're slowing the loop and breaking this pattern. So uh, breaking this pattern and contributing to the carbon, uh, lower, to lower the carbon emission. Common Store is part of ICK's incubator and I would like to take the opportunity to thank them for validating and believing in our idea and also for uh, UNDP for giving us the chance to uh, spread the word for res uh, resale. So Common Store will uh, launch this year. And if you want to be more updated, uh, you can register on our, on our website, commonstore.co or follow uh, us on Instagram, store.common. Thank you. Uh, Visa, thank you so much. Um, yes, uh, I'm just gonna pick up on the one thing you said about do you really need to go to the mall? And sometimes I need to ask myself, and I think a lot of people here in Kosovo as well, do you really need to go to the mall or you just need a walk in Germia? So, uh, <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it's really cool to see your platform coming together and really um, seeking for opportunities to not let uh, clothing become a source of emissions as waste. So thank you. Now that we have uh, Krinoa Rugova back, uh, we're going back to her. Uh, she's um, a dear, well-known designer, a graduate from the Parsons School of Design, running her own company and label successful collections locally and internationally, including New York, Vienna, Zurich, Paris. She's also a pioneer in fashion sustainability in Kosovo. Krenoare, I would kindly invite you to share your story. Uh, Amir, if you could please support our um, technical side with screen sharing. The presentation which we have shared with you. Well, until um, Amir shares the, my, my story. Uh, first, I do apologize for the inconvenience. I, uh, it, it just occurred unexpectedly and no power in, uh, in uh, this building. But um, thank you very much, uh, Anissa. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Swoko and uh, everyone uh, uh, present uh, here. I am very happy and glad that uh, fashion is being treated uh, as an important subject and um, uh, as uh, a part of uh, uh, our lives and uh, as a culture and uh, a, a, a that shapes our lives, actually. And uh, while I was talking with Enisa yesterday on a short meeting we had, I told her uh, that I'm glad that uh, finally fashion design is being treated like architecture, let's say, uh, just like uh, architecture uh, does impact uh, our lives, how we live, um, the way we behave, uh, fashion design does the same. So I would gladly share, I prepared a, a, a short uh, amount of my, my work and uh, the plans what uh, I am uh, preparing for 21-22. So whenever, it, it's better to communicate and present when we have photos. So whenever Amir is ready with the presentation, I will continue. 
Yes. Um, we're just. Sorry, can I? Uh, Amir is short. No, it's okay. This is much. Uh, it's not. It's a natural as uh, well as, way to as, introduce. Yeah, introduce. as not the having power like out of the blue. Okay, I think it's because uh, it's a, such a large presentation. It was stuck in my outbox, and uh, now it's taking a bit of time until uh, Amir receives it. Um, in the meanwhile, maybe Krenoir, you can share uh, your uh, your story with the Sustainability Award, which uh, got some international recognition for sustainability seen in Kosovo. Uh, well, yes, thank you, Enisa. So uh, I have been working for five, six years now with the uh, sustainable textiles and uh, the idea of uh, finding out that I'm actually working with such textiles was uh, the fact that I, I was using the same fabrics as uh, in search of another type of fabric because I was using the same fabrics like all the other designers in, in Kosovo and Kosovo is uh, quite rich in, in uh, designers and creative people. And I just needed to find something else for myself that is um, out of the, the common market. So then I started uh, searching for textile and somehow I reached for the, um, I, I, I found out and happened to be amongst the hand woven textiles. And it all started with the textiles that um, uh, were hand woven uh, up to 100 years ago. And then I shared out the world, the, the words to uh, the community. And uh, as I was uh, trying to buy pieces of textile, people were bringing me pieces to my, to my studio just to, to sell them. And there were rolls of textiles uh, that belonged to their families. And uh, what that was the, the turning point but when I found out that this textile is not just an ordinary one. People were burying the textile to, um, during the war to save it uh, from burning. And while it was, uh, uh, while it spent time underneath uh, the earth, it uh, started getting um, soft and, and, and decomposing just like when you burn a paper. And that's when it hit me and uh, I, I, I found out that not only I can uh, use this fabric, not only I can uh, remake this fabric, not only I can reuse the, the tradition, uh, but it's actually a sustainable textile. And then that's how it started. I um, uh, started first uh, getting textiles from other other um, uh, people. Uh, I, I washed it, I dyed it, I pleated it, and then it was a huge success. People really got connected because usually what, what you need is a story um, to connect with, with your audience, with your clientele. And uh, uh, then I, people, uh, came to the studio to say that uh, uh, they can actually hand loom. So then I started working with, with uh, this particular one woman and uh, uh, incredible woman. She was working in her studio at home. And I started uh, researching um, uh, the, with her new types of weaving. Uh, there was much that we could do because she had a particular type of, of weave, but just mixing the threads and mixing the lines and making it more transparent or um, uh, just uh, researching the colors and the lines, what we could do. And then I did a collection with that and it came out to be wonderful. And then people, it, it came out to be 
uh, I don't, maybe the slides could go on of the presentation because it's just <laughs> it's a good transition to the story. Yes, <laughs> you know, it can just keep going on and then I'll follow on the on the photo. So this is the 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 woman that you're seeing in the first textiles that we did. They are all 100% cotton, and uh, uh, they came out to uh, to look quite uh, modern and avant-garde, which was my my aim actually. And uh, it was a big success also. And then I needed a softer version of this of this fabric and. Uh, then I researched more on the people who do this technique. And the technique, as you see on the photo, is um, this is just the threading of the, preparing the thread of the loom. And it's like a couple meters uh, long of process to get the tension of the, of the thread right to uh, incorporate it on the, on the whole loom. You can proceed. So uh, then these are the other textiles I started doing in Škodra in Albania with uh, Artemisano Studio that have, has been working since the 1800s. I, uh, they were recommended to me. I went to visit them. Uh, we chose the, the colorings and the, the threads together and came up. So what happens is you actually with, with hand loom textiles, you uh, innovate textile as you work. So we started doing samples of 10 centimeters each to see what happens when you put three th uh, threads on length grain, four on cross grain, and what if you mix the colors and such. And then in the end, I was um, filled with uh, loads of rolls of, of textiles of different colors and all 100% uh, cotton uh, in loom can handle a lot of different types of threads from from um, from cotton and linen and uh, silk. It comes out beautiful, but it is uh, more expensive. Uh, and I'll come to that part uh, uh, later about the threadings. But these are some of the pieces that came out of the textiles that we produced here in Kosovo. And uh, with a lady in um, in uh, from Dechan, and here it's mixed with silk organza, so it's all um, organic uh, composable textile. These are other so these are all previous collections that I've been uh, working, and as as I do work on these. At the same time, it's not, it, for me, it's not just presenting a collection, it's actually doing research for myself, which is a lot of time consuming. It's very costly because the textile itself, it is very expensive. It does not come on 150 centimeter width, but um, the uh, 90 centimeters the, the widest. And then after I did all this the research on 2018-19, when I launched my uh, online store, it was I uh, I did a, a whole new presentation of our brand where we really uh, took the the path of sustainability and uh, but always in with the the means of creating uh, modern and contemporary uh, pieces that uh, that um, speak for my clients because that is my my client, a contemporary um, woman. So this was also uh, very well accepted uh, for uh, locally and internationally. It was uh, it's quite uh, early to, to present this form of, uh, of, of fashion, slow fashion, when everything is, as Vesa has uh, mentioned, when everything is going so fast and people go to the malls every week for new collection. So I was competing and I still am with giants, but um, I truly believe on, on uh, uh, this, this, these products, on this mission. And I might do a small step 
but uh, it, uh, uh, I'm sure and I hope it does inspire others to do their, um, uh, their part. So then we, we create uh, a whole um, uh, group of uh, uh, supporting this. Uh, and then it was great that because this collection with a uh, hand loom uh, woven textiles uh, was uh, featured on Purple Magazine. And um, it was great to see, because this is a well-renowned uh, international magazine, that this, not only my, my uh, collection, not only my brand, but uh, uh, we represented uh, Christina girls, we represented the city and uh, our mindset, our future mindset. This is another photo from the, the same collection, and it, uh, just, uh, it just shows that you can use the, the traditional techniques and always you can uh, redirect them to um, be as, as uh, rep representing the, the current times and be very relevant. Uh, and then after that, we, the fashion, um, Skopje Fashion Week, uh, they invited me as a guest, um, guest uh, uh, designer to present the collection, which was made 100% uh, out of uh, textile from the loom woven textiles. And uh, it was great to see that the thing not just me as a designer, but just the sustainability in, in fashion was kind of uh, coming around in, in the region. And we know this is very uh, big and ongoing in the Western countries, but it's just very new to, uh, to our country and uh, the, the region. Um, then uh, after all this work, and I did the collection, uh, which, uh, also included not, uh, not hand uh, woven textiles, but organic textiles, but I did um, non-harming the process of dyeing uh, the, the textile. And uh, with the, considering this collection and all my other previous work, then I um, got the, the Big C Award on um, sustainability uh, in fashion approach from Slovenia. And that was also great to see uh, that um, other institutions are considering what's, what uh, we do here in, in Pristina, not because all the time only, as I said, architects were uh, out there uh, getting all the recognitions for uh, their um, uh, design and uh, sustainability approach. So I was just glad to see that they, their heads are turned this, uh, uh, this way for the, the fashion industry also. And I'm sure they will be seeing more. And these are some of the, the techniques that I do of the dyeing process. They are all natural dyes that I get from overseas. And um, they make my studio uh, beautiful for that period of time of uh, the dyeing process and then uh, the collection itself uh, also. Uh, another form of, uh, of um, working sustainably is also when, when uh, you collaborate with uh, other um, ancient artisanal studios or techniques. Uh, I've always been a big fan of uh, collaborating with other uh, artists or handcrafters, and this was just a, a, a collection uh, on uh, the, the duvets transforming into um, outerwear, into ja uh, winter jackets. And it was just great to collaborate with uh, an unknown um, guy from Prizren who has been doing this uh, technique of, uh, of quilting the, the duvets uh, by hand or machinery. And it's just a great way to, to reuse the, the, uh, the old uh, textile, the old techniques 
the, the, the approach of the of the duvet itself for the, the contemporary um, client. Uh, my other uh, collaboration. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, and I hate to interrupt, but if we can just uh, shortly uh, wrap up because we're yes finished. absolutely so other uh, uh collaborations uh, such as in photo is with 3d uh, print designers with embroidery designers with printing designers and are all have a sustainability uh approach and uh, i think the last photo is with what i will wrap up with is um after doing all this uh research on my own we are planning to open the new KR lab for, um, it will be aimed to design research and produce textile. It will be a space where I, uh, where we can research more of this uh, old techniques, we'll use uh, digital uh, hand looms and um, we'll use new types of thread in the market to produce the, uh, the new textile of the uh, 22, uh, 2022 years. So um, I truly hope that with this uh, and through our communications with the people that we're sharing with uh, this, uh, this, these presentations, we'll get uh, interested uh, people to come and contribute and uh, uh, do their own research on our lab. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Kanoara. This you're you're not only contributing but transforming. I think the, the value chain and just creating the te textile and dyeing and the entire process is going through uh, your work. And we're looking really looking forward to the work that you will keep doing with the lab. That's super interesting to follow. Okay, uh, thanks, Kanoara. Uh, Niki Murseli uh, is our next uh, presenter. She's a graduate of architecture from the University of La Sapienza of Rome, co-founder of Duvo and Duvo Lab, uh, multi multidisciplinary design studio embracing circularity and researching materials, researching waste and circular design. She's also an active member of the community who uh, co-founded Thermokis. So, um, Niki, over to you. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity um, to present our work today, uh, especially for the Earth Day, since it's a day that we're working for. Um, I will share my screen. Um, you can see it? Yes, um, the, the only remark, and I'm sorry because you and Han are the last ones, but it would be great if we can keep it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so hi to everybody who's listening to us today, and I'm here to represent our initiative, which is called Duvo. And we are a group of multidisciplinary um, professionals who are using our passion and skills to create zero waste uh, production and upcycling uh, plastic waste. So, um, oops. I, I can't change the, I don't know why. So, so funny for such a lineup with the like most tech advanced huh. speakers. Okay. It worked. <laughs> Sorry. So, our mission as Duvo is to, um, uh, to raise capacities in order to uh, upcycle inorganic materials. And our special attention is towards uh, acrylic plastics uh, because since 2010, it's not being even recycled anymore due to the fact that it's uh, production um, costs way less and harms less the environment than its recycling process. So uh, our main objectives as initiative are to have a social impact, environmental impact, uh, design innovation and economical impact of course if possible. So the problem for us, as you asked earlier, is it better to uh, go to a shopping mall or have a walk in Dermia? Well, while we were doing the walks in Dermia, we uh, faced this huge problem of plastic waste uh, in our environment. So our story begins there. 
um, we were confronted with these uh, views that you see that are taken from Garmia National Park. So plastic pollution today is one of the biggest problems that we are facing as society. I'm not saying that is the only pro problem, it is one of the biggest. Uh, back at the time, it was an innovative invention which uh, revolutionized the world, but on the other side, it is a huge paradox because somehow we ended up single using an almost everlasting material. Uh, this approach has brought up uh, massive pollution. Uh, in 2017, the University of Georgia has conducted a research which showed that uh, the plastics that were produced from 1950s up to today has amazingly achieved an amount of 6.3 billion metric tons. And uh, from this, only 9% has ever been recycled, 12% incinerated, and 79% relies in nature. If we keep up with this pace by 2050, we will quadruple the amount that we have created in the uh, past 70 years. So our solution is simple. Um, it has to do with behavior, as we were talking before. So it's about um, upcycling waste. Um, and um, this, uh, because uh, the environmental benefits that we get from upcycling um, are enormous, uh, aside from minimizing the volume of discarded materials and waste being sent to landfill each year, uh, it also reduces the need for production of raw materials, which means a reduction in air pollution, water pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, and conser uh, conservation of global resources. Other um, uh, benefits of this approach are that we can celebrate artisanal um, works and uh, as well as support uh, local and rural, rural industry by reducing manufacturing costs. Um, our key activities as a remote team are that we collect the raw material from different plastic workshops because uh, by the time it ends up in nature, it's quite difficult to, um, to, uh, to collect it. So therefore we uh, started this by uh, primarily contacting the workshop that uses material. So before they uh, decide to throw it into trash, we go and collect it from there. Uh, then we take it to another process, which we call Deco Lab, uh, which is concerned with education, researching and designing these, uh, this plastic waste. Then we have the uh, training and manufacturing uh, program. And by the end, we have the, what we call the workshop, uh, what you have probably seen. Uh, today, what we uh, do with this material is mainly fashion accessories because of the machinery that we have available. Uh, so we're doing uh, earrings, rings, uh, and belts. Uh, but we are not just um, uh, holding ourselves back there. So we are continually uh, researching uh, new materials and new ways how this, uh, these can be used, especially if we use it for exterior, interior, and furniture design. Uh, due to the fact that these pieces are bigger, it will take a much larger plastic amount for these uh, to come to life. So therefore, the plastic amount that we upcycle or recycle is much greater than the, uh, the ones that we uh, do right now. Um, these are some uh, materials that we developed and some possible uh, ways that they can fit into furniture or other pieces while we're still researching. Um, we also want to give back to the community always. And that's why uh, as Digital Lab, we're doing design marathons, which are um, a series of um, workshops and hands-on uh, lectures uh, that have to do with design and circular economy principles. Uh, so we want to empower uh, youngsters from Pristina and from Kosovo uh, to uh, start to see new ways on how can they uh, implement their uh, passion or uh, knowledge uh, in design. Um, our team is mainly comprised from these people that you see here, and uh, our common vision is to put Kosovo on world map for creativity. Thank you. It was short, yeah. <laughs> Nike, this was short, and, and you are for sure putting Kosovo on the map, all of you guys, and thank you for doing that. Uh, fascinating story, Nike, and uh, we hope to maybe uh, catch up on more for, uh, from Duval in the uh, Q&A session, but without wasting any further time, uh, over to Hana Zecha, bringing us a glimpse of the future. She's a, a costume design graduate from London College 
uh, of fashion. She established her fashion design studio, Fight or Flight, developing fashion tech garments and producing everyday wear. She's been featured in different international exhibitions, including Moscow and London. Hana, um, over to you. Thank you, Anissa. And thank you, Ms. Woko and the UNDP team uh, for the opportunity to share our perspective of fashion industry. Um, just want to make sure that you can see my presentation. Yes, perfect. Okay. So I'd like to start by introducing Fight or Flight, which is a fashion studio based in Pristina, uh, which has been supported by ICK as well. It's been part of the incubator. And uh, the mission was to develop fashion tech, prototype garments, and uh, slow fashion everyday wear aiming to find practical and sustainable solutions through smart textiles and electronics in garments. And by producing uh, other everyday wear through transparent and ethical production uh, in a sensible production quantity, uh, using mainly local support uh, supply chain uh, for long lasting designs. Our initial uh, and uh, main focus is on the field of fashion wearable technology. And today I would like to share some of the research we have done in perspective to sustainability and how can innovation and technology really help in this matter. Uh, for maybe for some of you if you are just being introduced to fashion tech i would just like to give an overview what it really means um it actually enables uh, a fashion experience through technology or or it enables you to interact with your garment um a garment which uses motor sensors has a lot of uh, background information from engineering biology Nanotechnology uses artificial intelligence, soft robotics to create functional clothes for specific um, specific uh, necessity through reactive and smart textiles. In extension to this, something that we are uh, working on as well as fight or flight is digital textile or 3D printed textile, which has been proven to be quite sustainable, which I will um, show you something later on as well. Regarding the innovation and sustainability uh, or innovation in fashion really uh, initially started probably to create functional garments uh, for entertaining purposes, for um, apparel reasoning, for, for fun generally. And then it extended to be uh, more useful also for medicine. And it has been a crossover of a different field. And what is important in regards to sustainability that through these functional garment that have been foreseen to be made in the future, which we've also tried to make prototype at Fight to Flight, is to create uh, transformable uh, multifunctional garments that are long lasting. And in this way, we can actually reduce the consumption. So instead of buying probably three gar garments, we can buy one and have multiple function functions in it. And when I say multiple functions, it can really mean like um, a do detection of the body changes of temperature can change the color as the textile you are seeing here by Promorpheus, with who uh, is the US brand with whom we are working in creating garment that can change the color through a phone app. Uh, that in this way, uh, we can actually have a control over our garments and uh, bottom line um, have it stay in our closet for longer. Extensively, this, um, these functional garments have uh, been really focused on the textiles. Obviously, textiles are the main focus in sustainability and fashion. Obviously, that's where we can really work on and change something. So programmable textiles uh, use biomimicry, meaning that um, they imitate nature. Uh, using also soft robotics. So um, what scientists have done is that have observed living things from uh, cells, proteins, enzymes, and other structures in nature that can actually change the volume or can transform based on the data or outside stimuli or data that comes from the body as well. Uh, in this case, for example, temperature or other changes, um, heart rate, etc. Also, wood has been proven to be um, uh, transformable. This is something that has been researched at MIT, and it's uh, potentially something that can be used in other products of design as well, but also specifically in uh, fashion industry. That generally it has an organic uh, uh, component, but it also is functional in terms of innovation and functionality. 
Additionally, what is more interesting and probably very promising is biotextiles. Uh, that is an, an, uh, another extension in uh, fashion tech in terms of that you can use biotextile, you can actually make textiles out of bacteria and yeast and kombucha and algae and fungi. But what's really interesting and innovative about these textiles is that they have conductive capacity. So through these textiles, you can really incorporate conductive threads or conductive materials. I know this might sound scary, but the, there's no electricity involved. So all these materials are really body friendly. And bottom line, uh, at the end of this uh, garment's life cycle, the garment is biodegradable and the component, the electronic component that is in, induced in the, is, is incorporated in the garment can be used for other purposes. Uh, what is more approachable for now for the industry uh, and for us as Fight or Flight as well is 3D printed textiles, uh, something we are working on to create a collection during this uh, year. And when it comes to environmental impact, uh, 3D printed textiles, uh, first off, uses less transport and carbon emission, meaning that a regular uh, collection might be transport, transferred from one country to the other until it's finally produced and uh, um, put out in the, in the shops. It's a lighter product and it's economically uh, better to be manufactured and it loses uh, less electricity. It can easily be repaired and it's presumed that maybe in the future we might have 3D printers at home and make our own clothes, meaning that we can replace parts of the garment instead of just throwing it away and buying it a new one. So generally it uh, produces less waste because it's environmentally, it uses environmentally friendly materials such as recycled filaments, which can be recycled at the end of the garment's life cycle and you can make something else out of this, uh, out of this uh, garment. And lastly, I would like to uh, also bring up the digital fashion, which we have witnessed in the last year. It, it has been like a first fast process because of the pandemic, something that has been worked on in the past three or four years to create virtual garments or create your avatar, like personal avatar that you can actually uh, upload on the app or on the website and then add this virtual garment to see if you really actually like it or if it fits you well. So in this way, you don't have to really produce or mass produce a lot of garments, but instead you are actually having tailor-made kind of uh, clothes or based on requests. So this is something that a lot of um, high-end brands have been uh, using in their fashion shows and also in presenting their collections. But besides all the high-end brands, uh, the main focus is in fast fashion, obviously. And now seeing this emergency, the fast fashion brands are really trying to find a way to uh, promote this idea of sustainability, to change the consumer behavior and all together save the environment. And I would like to um, end this presentation by a video from Asian Nam with whom I happen to work specifically in the program for sustainability and innovation to see how can we find ways to really uh, change this mindset and have us evolve all together as a society in regards to uh, saving the environment. Here I am worrying about the future again. Dear aliens, send help. No, but seriously, does anything we do make any difference? Oh, I guess it's not all bad. Like, I read that the technology behind coding is based on century-old inventions for weaving fabrics. Meaning, if we didn't have this, we wouldn't have that loop machine. And now we can use this new technology, based on really old technology, to recycle and make new fabrics from old fabrics. One thing evolves into another, like What if we could loop ourselves? Level up and take steps in the right direction. We won't be completely new people. We'll just have evolved. And maybe that's what we all want to do. Evolve. Do something today. Make a difference tomorrow. Thank you. Hannah, thank you so much. I mean, not only is this fascinating, but it's just inspiring for our team as well. And um, for us at UNDP, it's really important to see that uh, there's vibrations in Kosovo, there's change happening, and we really want to be a platform bringing all of these change makers together. And it's so fascinating to see what everyone is doing. Hana, this is 
is is future gonna is technology going to save us is the question i have after your your presentation but i really hope so yes <laughs> that's the alternative okay. Uh, okay, perfect. So um, I, there's a comment from Yola. The presentations are fascinating, inspiring, and motivating. Thanks to the great designers. I'm speechless. You ladies are really amazing. So this, this feeling is really shared by the audience here. I also have received some questions in private. Um, one is, what can we in Kosovo do? It's easy to talk, but what practical steps can be taken to live more sustainable in clothing? So maybe you can also, sh very shortly, I, I don't want to um, appoint to who, whoever of you wants to pick uh, this up, but uh, we also want to hear what kind of policy support or what kind of, what are the needs that uh, your, you as entrepreneurs have to, to drive change? Okay. Um, Nikki, you're smiling. No, I'm just smiling because when all of us can can answer the question, uh, what, what what can we do in order to drive this change? Um, I mean, we should uh, first of all, uh, uh, one thing that struck me uh, through our research, uh, especially uh, towards the young generations and the things that are going on. Uh, there's this uh, research conducted by Kosovo Live Agency uh, and the perspective of circular economy and uh, environmental sustainability. And they have found out that almost 60% of people in Kosovo have no idea about circular economy or that they are causing any damage to the environment. 72% um, out of all these people believe that this is due to the fact that there are no initiatives uh, in Kosovo in order to inspire or to set examples. So um, regarding this, um, I think that all of us um, can do something if we wanna really have a change. It doesn't have to be uh, something that um, comes from somebody else and then uh, we just push it through. We can uh, always be the initiators. But anyways, um, uh, inspiring stories are really important for people to see what's happening. And if you don't have any idea about what you're causing with your behavior, of course, that you're not going to be concerned about it. So I think um, we should definitely use our way to the technology, especially internet, much better than just um, conducting chit chatting in Facebook or uh, other platforms. So we can always uh, keep ourselves updated at least five minutes a day just to read some new stories about what's happening in the world and how is it going. So I think it takes also others to inspire you, but first of all, we have to take the first step. Thanks, Nikki. But basically, everyone has the tools. We just need the curiosity and the drive more, more than anything else. Okay, uh, next question, Rina. Uh, Rina Meta, thank you to everyone for your presentations. Congrats to Vesa on her new venture. I, I cannot wait to see it for it to start operating. I would like to know if she and her team have conducted any local research that would indicate the local fashion consumption as well as the amount of it ending in landfills in Kosovo. Uh, hi, Rina, thank you. Uh, there is still no any evidence of the landfills in Kosovo, but me and my team are looking for more funds and experts so we can start and conduct this quantitative research about the landfills in Kosovo. And I think it's really uh, important to do that so we can see uh, not only in Kosovo, but also in the region, because I, I didn't see any data also for the uh, neighbor countries. So it will be, uh, I think this year, we're gonna start by June to uh, conduct all the plan and the research for uh, that part. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks so much. So um, I believe Krenoa is facing further uh, cutouts, but there's questions for Krenoa. In the meanwhile, Hana, so cool with technology in the clothing. How far away in time is this type? are these types of integration for everyday clothing? Where can we, the normal people, afford to buy it? 
Um, yeah, well, this is an ongoing uh, process. It's in a process in development and research. Uh, the idea is to really simplify these garments in order for you not to feel as a robot when you're walking. Or, so the idea is to really find a solution to best replace uh, the existing clothes because from the um, from some of the uh, surveys that I've done with uh, different people in regards to how they want to have technology in clothes, some of them are being resist, uh, resistant to it because they feel that the technology might take over and control them way more than they would like to. But that's not the idea. The idea for technology is to be very subtle in the way it's integrated and the way you use it for uh, daily functionality. So I suppose in the next five years, we will have uh, something in, in the market. Prototypes are being made. A lot of brands have created garments. It's just a process of really uh, finding the right moment to introduce, it, to introduce it to the mass market. Okay, Tana. So uh, we wait and we look forward to seeing tech uh, integrated in our fashion. Rusha is saying, I do not have any questions, but I would like to thank all the speakers. It was a very valuable presentation and I learned a lot about the fashion industry and how to find the right solution to save our planet. Thank you one more time. Okay, so I know we're 15 minutes already past uh, the time plan for our session, but there's the four presenters with valuable uh, information. So it's totally uh, a time uh, worth investing for everyone here. Um, maybe the last thing I would like us to uh, share is the initiative that we are intending to uh, work on together with uh, the designers. And um, having Maria, as, a, as she said, Miss Woko is a great uh, supporter of reinventing fashion for Kosovo as well. So we're jump diving into this new initiative. Uh, and maybe Hana, you can share with us um, the joint work that we will be doing uh, very soon. You're muted. Yeah, sorry. Um, I would just like to um, also just show it on the screen as well. Um, well, we are actually, um, I might be sharing this uh, verbally for now, and then we will uh, also uh, introduce it in the UNDP's pages and all of our platforms as well. So we have team with uh, UNDP, uh, four of us, uh, for a workshop. It will be an alternative and uh, innovative way of um, a 3D, three day uh, workshop where participants will be introduced to the existing manufacturing process of production, the new concepts of sustainable fashion production, so circular economy and alternative design through recycling and upcycling. So in this workshop, each participant will collect their use and unwanted clothes deconstruct them and create a new design. Uh, so these design will be complied as new limited edition co uh, collection of clothes that will consist two to five items. And then uh, when this collection is made, uh, it will be the first uh, uh, upcycle collection, participants will be able to individually sell their designs in common store without the commission fee. And later on, uh, if participants are interested for, for the practical work, um, they can approach us and join our team and our studios to see uh, uh, from up close the work that we do. Uh, there's a chat uh, message saying, so cool. So uh, we're really looking forward to this uh, initiative together. And I think that it's going to be a hands-on experience on innovation and redesigning the, the path of fashion. Uh, Kinoa is not here with us any longer, but uh, maybe over to uh, Maria for uh, the last words before we close. Thank you, thank you so much. I mean, I think, you know, what I said in the beginning that we were kind of wanting to share ideas and inspiration. I think, you know, we really got an inspiration overload <laughs> from from this uh, session i mean truly fascinating work that 
all four of you are doing. And, and I think that, you know, um, it's, you know, there's just so much potential and I, there's so much thought that has gone into all of this. I, I'm really hoping that there will be ways for us to collaborate and, you know, also um, with to bring other partners along because we see this, you know, not only as an environmental issue, but it is also, you know, it has great potential to create jobs and livelihoods. And, and, and I think that particularly now that we're all actively looking for ways how to respond to this crisis that the COVID has created. Um, anything we can do in, in coming up with new jobs, new, new ways of, you know, sustainable <laughs> livelihoods, we're very keen to team up. And, I, and just also to add this workshop that is planned uh, that will also include uh, beneficiaries from our active labor market measures program, which is, uh, you know, it's so it's, you know, combining a lot of interesting initiatives together. But thank you so much for joining us and sharing um, your work with us. I think this is just the beginning. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, if, if you, all of you, the fabulous designers and entrepreneurs that we have here would like to just say the last uh, words and then uh, we're closing. All good? I guess I want to thank you all once again. I think this is the first time that we've initiated this talk and I hope this is not going to be the last. So... Perfect. Uh, I so, guess it's a good start. Exactly. So uh, maybe we can end on this note and over to Kanoa. I see she's unmuted and back. Yes, I, I'm happy. I got back uh, at least to uh, to finally uh, thank you for uh, this event. As I said in the beginning, I'm really glad. And now, not uh, not that I doubted it, but it's just, it was very inspiring, even though I do know all the, uh, the, the designers and their work is just more incredible and inspiring for me. And I, I uh, am just really glad that this is a, a completely new dimension for all uh, other uh, creative people out there. So thank you. Thank you, Kenal. Okay, so. Uh, I think we can end here and thank you so much for staying over time. It has been a fascinating discussion. We will be sharing uh, the video, the recording from today's conversation through our platforms to and all of those who were not able to uh, follow today are, are able to uh, watch the video later on. So thank you very much and stay with us for the rest of the exciting activities, um, very earth friendly activities that we have for the Earth Days. Okay, um, it's been a pleasure. See you, everyone. <laughs>